Welcome to me and my golf. We're your coaches, Piers and Andy. Now, this is week one, the basics. So, the basic art of hitting a chip shot. So, first of all, what is a chip shot? It's when we're close to the green and we've got a short carry and then we've probably got more roll than we spend time in the air. Now, Andy, we know the number one most important thing with a chip shot is contact. So if you can get great contact on your chip shots, you're going to be okay. So if you're watching this, you probably are struggling with your contact. And we know that we can sometimes get nervy, we lose confidence. So what would it be like if we could actually give you confidence and give you a great contact on your chip shots? We know it can definitely change you. We've all been there on those dodgy oh. contacts. It's not a very nice place to be, I can tell you that. I am shuddering thinking about them now. So Andy, there are a couple of things that can cause us to have bad contacts. What are they? Okay, well look, generally there's two things. We're either too steep or too shallow when we're hitting the golf ball. But what do we mean by that? Well, that's the attack angle, the, the angle that the club is actually hitting down at the ground. So too steep is basically too much of a downward attack angle. We often see the club crashing into the ground, a lot of interaction with the turf. Sometimes the club doesn't actually move past the golf ball and we can end up actually duffing the golf ball a yard or two and that's not where we want to be. Mm -hmm. The too shallow is basically when we're actually hitting on the way up. We can hit the ground first sometimes, it sort of brushes, but more often than not we'll get this sort of knife or skull shot where we hit the golf ball halfway up, it goes flying through the back of the green, and again you're left with another awkward chip shot, and you don't want to have two chips. If we're chi chipping two times around the green, then our scores are going to add up and we don't want that. Yeah, definitely not. So I think, look, one of the, the best ways that we can get confidence is by actually having the correct concept, because a lot of people have the, uh, a poor concept. So what can help golfers to improve their confidence by getting a better concept? Well, this is something that we coach a lot of our students, and I think it's a game changer, this is, because certainly as for, for our coaching, but at the same time for our games as well. So we'll start asking you this question, are you trying to hit the golf ball or are you trying to hit the ground? Now, if you're trying to hit the golf ball, then we want you to maybe think about applying this thought because it could really open up some great shots for you. We want you to think about hitting the ground, not at the golf ball. And it sounds really strange if you're somebody who's hit a lot of duffs, you think, well, I've got to hit the ground, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> But actually, if we hit the ground in the right way with the things that we're going to show you today, it actually makes things so much easier because you understand how we use the club and how it interacts with the turf in a better way because we do want the club to hit the ground. But if we do it in a great way, we'll get a nice solid contact and even the bad shots will be better. Now, when it comes to chipping as well, we want to make sure that we have a slightly downward hit on the golf ball. We do want the club to be hitting down, but all I would say is we're not consciously trying to hit down. If we do that, we're going to see a lot of inconsistencies. All we really want to see is that we have a slight brush of the grass, and if we can do that, hopefully getting the golf ball on the ground somewhat close together. We don't want to hit the ground four inches behind the golf ball, but hopefully around about the right spot. But having that intention is key, hitting the ground, not the golf ball, and using the sole of the club. Yeah, I like that. So let's just hit this shot now. I think when we hit this shot, Andy, we, I'm going to be noticing the interaction you have with the ground because, as you said, we're not going to be taking out a divot, we're going to be brushing the ground, brushing, aren't we? Yeah. And that's my focus. I'm not even thinking about the ball. I'm just thinking about brushing the ground, hopefully round, roughly around where that golf ball is. And there's a nice shot. Again, real solid contact there. Again, it's tap in there, Pierce. You'd probably give me that one, actually. I know you're pretty generous. Probably wouldn't, actually. Now, as with all shots in golf, the setup is really important when it comes to getting these good strikes and these good shots. So, as we get into this, Andy, what are the bad setups that we see for the too steep and the too shallow? Well, it's amazing just making a couple of simple changes, how it, how it can transform the contact. So, let's just show that, well, I suppose, what we see when golfers come to us for lessons. Yeah. Well, the shallow one, let's, let's take a look at what happens first. We see golfers actually coming with the same approach they would to a normal full shot. They go wide stance, stand the same distance away. Now the problem is when we go this big wide stance, it puts our upper body well behind the golf ball and this is what can cause the shallow contacts where we get that sort of knife through the back of the green. And even if we just get the right shoulder a little too low as well, that can potentially cause that shallow contact. Now, when it, become, when it comes to the steep one, I'd say this is probably a really common one as well. Ball back in the stance, shaft leaning forward, weight on the lead side because we've been told we need to hit down at the back of the golf ball. Now, when we're in this situation here, this now is going to, as you can see, causes this sharp angle into the back of the golf ball. 
And if we do that, we can get it right every now and again, but if we get maybe a little bit of the ground first, because this leading edge is gonna dig in, that ball goes nowhere and that club just gets stuck into the back of the ground. So just making a couple of adjustments is gonna make a huge difference to how the club is going to interact with the ground and, and the golf ball. Okay, yeah, it makes total sense, makes total sense. So what, what are we after then? If we were to almost define a perfect setup, what would that be for a chip shot? Well, let's neutralize you out. And I think if you really struggle with contact, let's just go with a very neutral setup. So first thing is posture. Let's stand really close to the golf ball, a lot closer than you would normally. We're gonna get the shaft quite vertical actually, and this is gonna help use the sole of the club and get it flat through the, through the hitting area. Now from here, the butt of the club is gonna point at the midline of the body. And as you can see now, the feet are really close together. We do not need power, so we don't need the legs to be too much involved here. Having the feet close together really helps produce a consistent low point and strike with us like that. So from here, we're also gonna lean on the left side a little bit, and the shoulders are gonna be fairly neutral. So this is what we would like to see, because now we can use the, the sole of the club and we're not really getting too many excessive things going on. It's hard to get it wrong from here, Pierce. I think the one thing that I will say and add to this, Andy, is that if you're moving to the golf ball and it feels really weird, guess what? You probably haven't moved close enough. So you're really gonna have to test yourself with maybe some video feedback, maybe even a mirror, and really pushing the boundaries of how comfortable you feel getting close to the golf ball. Exactly, so you'll see here, I'm just gonna play the shot now again, really close, hands nice and high, feet close together, and you can see pretty neutral in that setup there. Another nice strike, again, a little bit of ground and ball together there. Pin high. Pin high, distance control. It's all about that strike. All about the strike. If you're enjoying this so far and want to take part in the rest of the plan, we have a special offer just for you. We're giving away a Me and My Golf merchandise pack that's rare that you cannot buy, that's worth over $50 for everybody who signs up to a Me and My Golf annual membership. And with this membership, you get access to all of our plans that we know is gonna make a massive difference to your game. Yes, all you need to do is use the code CHIPITCLOSE. Entries close for this offer, Wednesday the 7th of October at 11.59 p.m. And all you need to do is click the link in the description. Right then, Andy, we spoke about obviously how the setup influences that strike and your shots. Obviously, we know that you can be too steep and too shallow when it comes to your technique as well. So what sort of things are we looking at for that? Well, let's go with the too shallow, and this is a common one as well, because we're so close to the green. A lot of people make the mistake of actually trying to get the golf club to swing down the target line, almost in a straight line. So we see a lot of people doing this, going in a straight line, but what you'll notice as I'm doing this, it almost causes my head to go back, the right shoulder to dip here, and it causes the club to bottom out can it these really high, soft, floaty ones that actually don't go anywhere and run out, and we want to get that roll out. Another thing we see is where the wrists are a little too active. So we'll see a lot of independent movement of the golf club like this. So as we do this, this creates some inconsistent speed, some strikes, too much loft, and it's quite hard to be consistent from here. We don't really get the body involved. And then the next one, a really common one, is that a lot of people are actually trying to lift the golf ball in the air. So we see them trying to help it in the air, where they're almost pushing off their front foot, Pierce, there, <laughs> moving on to the back foot, and again, causes a lot of sort of um, ground first, again, some high shots here, all that sort of dreaded one that goes through the back of the green. But it makes sense to try and lift it, because every other sport that we play, we've got to almost lean back to hit it, but exactly. not on this one. We've got loft on there to help us from that. And then we have the steep one. This is usually sort of as a result of the, con the concept where people are trying to hit down too much. So we'll see that, again, pretty much with this sort of setup that we see, they're trying to hit down, they're leaning the shaft forward, even their knees are going with this to help get them to the bottom of the golf ball. We get this nervy, twitchy shot that you've seen a lot of people play, which we don't want as well. Unfortunately, that looks all too familiar and it <laughs> definitely is gonna hurt your chipping. Now, what we need you to understand with this is, the best way for you to find out which one you're doing is just to video yourself. Get a front on camera or down the line camera and video yourself. Now, what we have done is we've given you loads of drills on how to combat the specific swing fall. So make sure you check out your drills for week one. Now, Andy, let's stop talking about the bad. What do we want to focus on? What do we want to do? Well, let's go from the start. Let's go talking about this reference in terms of the target line, yes. what we want to see here. So because we're standing to the side of the golf ball, even though we're closer, we still want the club to actually move in from the target line. It's moving around the body mm -hmm. still. And if we do that, you'll see how different the motion is with the body. Look at this right shoulder now, it moves through past the golf ball. My body's turning and I'm not sort of leaning back. 
this really helps me get that nice strike on the, the ground and the golf ball. And you can see as a result, the weight's moving forward as well. So making sure the club is moving in from the target line is key. Another thing you'll notice is with the hands, the wrists and my body, I have a good structure, which means there's no sort of breakdown, no independent movement of the club head. You'll see that the arms, shoulders, hands and club are moving together. The structure of my arms and hands are really nice and solid. I've still got a light grip pressure, but mm -hmm. I'm not really tensing it too much. But from here, as you can see, everything's still working together. It just looks like it's going to be a lot more consistent when you do that, for sure. Exactly. And then the one to get rid of the lifter one here is basically, we want to make sure that we have a little bit more pressure on that lead leg. And as we swing through, it moves on to that lead leg because we have the loft to get the golf ball getting in the air. Our job isn't to try and help it. Our job is to get the golf ball going forward and then rolling. That's the key thing. So trusting that we have the loft and making sure we have the weight starting on the left side and finish on, finishing on the left side will ensure you get the strike and the loft will take care of itself. Well, you've got the perfect setup. I'm going to miss my thumb there, Andy. I'm that excited. You've got the perfect setup. Let's have a go at the shot. Come okay. on, see what you got. Well, there's you've a little done, bit of space in there. A right little but... bit of space in there. You're okay. obviously pulling them or something. <laughs> well, yeah, the greens maybe need to be a bit faster. Okay. That's a beautiful strike Great contact there. again. And look at the consistency just by getting pure contact. Not bad. Thank you. Just aim properly next time. <laughs> now, we get asked a lot, what club should I chip with? Well, guess what? You can chip with a variety of different clubs, but we are going to recommend that you do two different clubs and it can depend on the lie and the shot that you have left. So we've actually got a couple of situations here and he's going to go through it and why he's picking the shots that he's going to be using. But Andy, you like to have a high option and a low option when it comes to chipping, don't you? Yeah, and this is what we recommend you do. You choose two clubs, one that's for a basic chip and run shot that you don't need any elevation and then you need one with plenty of loft that you need maybe a high soft landing shot. So I personally use a 52 for the basic shots and then a 58 for the higher, sh higher shots. And the great thing about choosing two is you really get tuned in to the carry, the roll, and how they feel. So it really makes it easy to predict when you're in the certain shot and you haven't got to think too much, as opposed to actually trying to use loads of different ones and not really tuning into any of them. So we really, that's why we recommend choosing the two. So let's play these shots. First one here, pretty basic, loads of green to work with, nothing too complicated about this one. This is where I just get the golf ball on the green and rolling with this 52. So as you said there, Andy, it's going to roll out quite a lot when it gets there. Yeah, very nice. And as you can see, I don't have to Good think shots. too much. I don't have to really sort of work too hard to doing that because I'm so tuned into it. Just because you've done it a lot, basically. I've done it so many times, yeah. yeah. Now we have a shorter shot. I need now some loft because the green runs away from me and I need to really get it up and out of this rough here. So this is where I play the 58. So it's just understanding when we can use these shots in different situations. So for me now, this is just going to be a slightly higher soft landing shot hopefully i can access this but nothing too different in the technique here actually created a bit of spin on that one nice. it got it right low off the face but really good control shot there because i've got the right club club selection is key choose those two and you're going to access some pins easy each week we're going to bring you a different course skill something you can work out on the golf course that's going to help you become a better chipper. Now, what a lot of people make the mistake of doing is just standing here and not really taking in as much information as they could. So this week, we want you to actually walk onto the green. So make an effort to walk onto the green to gather a few more bits of information. So first of all, you can see whether it's actually wet or whether it's dry. You can feel in the feet if it's hard or if it's soft. And what I like specifically about this I like it, it gives me a different perspective of the shot. I can really neat, see now from a side on view, the distance that he's got to cover. And one thing I like to imagine is, I like to imagine the journey of the shot going to the hole. It really helps me judge the distance when I come to play the shot. So once I've done that, I'll walk back, I've got a lot more information and it's going to be a lot easier to play the shot. So here we go. All the information I need. Let's see if I can chip this one close. Reasonable, could be better. There's a big difference between how you just practice your chipping and actually practicing under pressure. If you're just practicing and working on technique, you can actually have another go and it doesn't really matter. Therefore, 
there's no consequence. But in the real game, in a situation where you're playing in a medal or playing in a competition against your friends, there's pressure there. That's why we've introduced these games every single week that's going to simulate the real game, that's going to help you prepare for those situations where you need to pull the shot off. And the first game we want you to do, or to choose from, is par 18. Now find a green, if it's a practice green, fantastic. Choose nine different positions around the green where you're going to play nine different golf balls. Three easy, three medium and three hard. Now the idea of this is to up and down each ball. Two is a par, therefore 18 for the whole lot is par, so it's par 18. Also, par 18 is world class, so don't <laughs> worry if you don't get par straight away and you're only allowed to do this once. But if you do this game, you're actually gonna simulate lots of different situations, it's gonna test you under pressure and it's really gonna help you prepare for those pressure situations on the golf course. Yeah, look, it makes a massive difference when it comes to getting on the course. You do this over a prolonged period of time, you really will up your level, especially when the pressure is on. And the second game is chipping zones. So this is pretty simple as well. Again, works best if you've got a practice chipping green. All we're saying is that we want you to get the golf ball within six feet or within three feet to the hole. Now, if you can start doing that regular, we know that you're gonna hopefully knock in some of those putts. So the way that we measure this is literally get our pitching wedge, put the club head in the hole, and then just put a tee peg at the butt end of the grip. That's your three foot margin. Then flip the club over, put another tee peg in by the club head now, and then you have your six foot margin. And obviously you can put the tee pegs all around the hole. Now the scoring on this works like this. If you chip it in the hole, it is three points. It is two points if you get it within three feet, and it is one point if you get it between three and six feet from the hole. Now the objective for you with 10 balls, give yourself a target of 10 and see if you can beat that every time you do it. But again, it's like par 18, you can only do it once a day. Your practice this week should involve at least one game of golf on the golf course, obviously to practice those core skills and one full hours practice session. Yeah, when you do your practice sessions, make sure the first 45 minutes are working at your setup and your swing changes. Make sure you get some video feedback with that and only go off the fairway, but mix up the clubs and mix up the different situations, but make sure you stay on the fairway for this week. And also to finish off your session then, throw in some of the games, so par 18 or chipping zones, or you can do both if you want, but make sure that you only do each one once on that day. And then make sure you record your scores so you can get better next time. So that is week one, we hope you enjoyed it. Now if you want to really build your confidence, really take your chipping to a new level and avoid some of those horrible shots that we all get every now and again, make sure you take part in the plan. Click the link right down there and we look forward to seeing you over there.